This video will be going over the Python scripts that I use in order to be able to make the different pork shop plots seen here and here. And I'm not going to waste any time because I already talked about everything about pork shop plots in the last video. So this one, I'm just going to get straight into the software. So getting to the function of doing these interplanetary pork shops, the way that I have it set up here is that there's some sort of initial config dictionary which has all a bunch of default arguments to the function and then if you want to override any of the default arguments you pass in a config dictionary that overrides them so some of the most important uh, values that are shown here are planet zero and planet one which basically means where are you leaving from which in this case is earth and where are you going to which is mars but in this case it's mars very center because we're going to use spice kernels in order to get the ephemeris data of earth and mars and this is just the way that you find the ephemeris data for Mars by using Mars Berry Center. You want to define your departure window. So departure zero, departure one is just the window of when you want to depart, which in this case, I'm doing 2020 July 1 to 2020 September 1. And the same thing for the arrival times. You want to define a mu value because this is going to matter for the Lambert's problem solver. You want to find a step of how often do you want to take these combinations. So this basically says for every single day from departure, for every single day in the departure window and every single day in the arrival window, I want to take a sample. So that's what the step is. The frame and the observer, we again need to get the ephemeris data of Earth and Mars Berry Center or any planets that you want to do using spice kernels. Cutoff V just means that you have some sort of cutoff value where a Lambert's problem, if it gives you a delta V that's greater than this, well, you don't really care about it anyways. These levels and then the rest of these arguments are all for the contour plots, which I'll get into later in the function. But basically, there's a lot of different options as far as how to actually plot these pork shop plots but as far as the calculations these are what's necessary for the calculations and again how you implement kind of this default config dictionary and then override with what you want to pass in is just this so for each key in the config dictionary that you pass in override the default dictionary with a key which whatever with whatever you're passing in it's kind of a weird way of doing it but it works well for me and i like it doing this way um, but obviously that's not necessary so then you want to define a cutoff C3, which is C3 is defined as the velocity above escape velocity squared. So that's how you're doing that there. You want to create an array of ephemeris times of departure and arrival times. So basically from the initial, the, the initial date of the departure window to the final date of the departure window, every single step that you passed in, which in this case is one day. Same thing for the arrivals. So that's all that's doing here. It's just defining those departure and arrival times. You want to get the number of days, the amount, the number of days in each array and total combination. So basically how many departures you're going to have, how many arrivals you're going to have, and the total amount just to print it out. It's kind of nice to know when you're doing this analysis. And here you're creating a bunch of 2D arrays in order to store all the data that you're getting from all the Lambert solver solutions. So you're getting C3 the short way, C3 the long way, the infinity short, the infinity long, and then time of flights for everything. And you want to create arrays for indexing the mesh grade. So basically for each departure date and each arrival date, which is how it's implemented here. So for each arrival date in Y, for each departure date in X, we're going to do the main function. Where the main function, the first thing you have to do is you have to calculate the ephemeris of the planet that where you are leaving from. So in this case, it's Earth. So in this case, I have spice tools, which I'll show in a second. Spice tools dot calc ephemeris so calc the ephemeris data of whatever planet you're at, what departure date is, wh or what the date is in ephemeris time, which in this case is just one, which is the departure dates and whatever index this currently is, what frame you're doing it in, which in this case is ecliptic J2000, and as shown here, and then the target is going to be solar system barrier center. So with respect to where is Earth with respect to the solar system barrier center, so you're getting that. And then again, you're getting the ephemeris data of planet one. So where you're arriving at arrival, which in this case is Mars at the arrival time, same frame and observer. And then to show what this calc ephemeris function looks like, spice tools, um, it's pretty simple. It's just using sp SPK EZR spice function. Um, and if the target is a string, use this one and this one EZ if you're doing that. This isn't really a very big deal. I've gone over this in a previous video, which I have a link in the description to. It's basically just using spice in order to be able to get the ephemeris data of these objects. And then we have uh, calculating the time of flight, which is the arrival minus the departure. And then we have this in a try and accept loop here where we actually solve a Lambert solver. 
So you want to try to solve Lambert using whatever state is departing from. So that's Earth. Where is Earth at the at departure? Where is Mars at arrival? And these are just the position vectors. And what is the time of flight, which is a definition. These three together is a definition of Lambert's problem. Whether you want to go the short way or the long way. So first we're going to do the short. So TM equals 1. And you're passing in the mu value. And then if Lambert's problem comes up with an error, which happens a lot, especially when you're just trying a bunch of random uh, different uh, combinations of departure, arrival, and time of flight, so you're going to come up with errors. Just define that the, that the velocity that was returned from the Lambert solver is just 1,000 because that's just going to be above the cutoff value. So that means it's not going to be considered in the actual plot. And then just do the exact same thing, but using TM equals negative 1 because we also want to find the long way. And again, same thing. If the Lambert solver errors, just throw back a thousand so it'll be beyond the cutoff so then to calculate the c3 is departing you want to take the norm of what the the velocity of departing short minus the velocity of the earth again three colon means the velocity of the earth so the difference between those two vectors take the norm of it and then square it in order to find c3 shorts and c3 for the long ways again c3 long and then again if they're above the cutoff Delta V's, just define them as the delta V's and the plot will take care of the rest. Doing the same thing with V infinity, uh, just find the difference between the vectors. When this time it's state arrived, so what is Mars velocity compared to what the velocity is when you arrive using the Lambert solver. And this is just V infinity, so you just subtract, find the difference between them and then take the norm for the both. Again, do the cutoff velocity. And then you're going to add all the values to the arrays, which is this is how you're going to use the actual Porchoff plot. So you basically you want to index whatever C3 short you got, put it in there, C3 long, all this, and make sure you get the right indexes of the, the nth arrival and nth departure there. And then this is just to print just to see where it's at along the way as it's running. So once, once it runs through all the different combinations, which is what these two for loops are, you just want to find the... I just convert the time of flights from seconds to days because it kind of just makes more sense when looking at the pork shop plot. And then you want to find the delta Vs instead of just the, the C3s. You want to find all the delta Vs that you need. You want to create these level arrays. So these levels arrays are just for the pork chop plot. Uh, it's basically, it's, it's the values of the contours of all the pork chop plot. Where, again, in the config dictionary, you can pass in default values if you want but if not here are some default values here or you can pass in values that aren't a default but if you don't pass in anything here are the default values um, and it's just a line width so this is actually getting into the pork chop plot where you have your contour and you have to save it as c0 c0 we have axe.contour c3 short so plot all the c3s what your levels are basically what your contour lines are you put there what color you want it to be again you can have this whatever color you want i just chose m for magenta and you have your line width so you can find whatever custom line widths that you want um i just found that when they're skinnier they're a bit cleaner uh these pork chop plots but you can do whatever you like and the same thing for every single value here so plotting c3 longs v infinities longs v infinity shorts um, and then time of flight. So basically plotting all the contours. This is how you do it doing the contour command in matplotlib. And then you want to, these plt.c labels are for the numbers in the contours. So these will just plot the contours, but these will label the contours with whatever you want. Where in this case, I just chose an integer that is FMT, which I think stands for format equals percentage i modulo i which just means give me an integer to label each of the contours and then the inputs into these are these what what the axe dot contour function returns are the inputs to these c labels so it knows what's to label and then this is just a little trick because i couldn't find a way to make a legend look right unless i just plotted zero zero with the correct um with the correct colors and then did the legend so if you do these in this order it'll make the legend look like in the way you want it to do this is a bit hacky um, b box so and then doing the plt dot legend here are the three values that you want in the legend and this is using um kind of latex format and you don't have to do this but this kind of just makes it a little bit where this is basically kilometer squared per second squared it makes it a fraction where matplotlib you can use latex kind of syntax in order to get things to look how the way you want them to but this isn't necessary Bbox to anchor is where you want the actual legend to be on the plot. And then font size is the font size of the legend or the values in the legend. 
send the title, X label, Y label. Th th this isn't too important. I just wanted to, the most important thing of this is the actual algorithm of finding all the Lambert's problem solutions. And this is the rest of this is just plotting. So if you want to show, if the config has to show, show. If you have a file name, just save it. Not a big deal. And then the same thing happens for the delta V plot here, where basically it's exactly the same thing. You're just plotting contours, again, using the x.contour, saving them. And then in this case, I wanted 0.1f, so I wanted decimals to point to, w so I wanted floats to one decimal place to be used. And then I didn't actually end up implementing this, so actually I can erase this as well. Uh, just if you want to plot specific points on there, I didn't actually end up using it. Um, so setting the title, Y label, X label, same thing. So again, I know I went over this really quickly, but this is honestly, in my opinion, it's still a little bit messy. I still want to clean this up a little bit more, but I just made the video for Porkchop Pod, so I just thought I would show how to do it. And definitely, please let me know if there's any questions about what I did, because again, I think... I still think it is a little bit sloppy and I could make it a little bit cleaner, the function as a whole and kind of how I name things. And also I could implement parallelization so it's not a nested for loop here, which makes it a little bit slower. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's pretty much it as far as the software goes.